So on the base of the sweet will of Gurudev, we will continue to share about quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita in different scriptures like in this case Shishi Radha Rasa Sudanidi and we came till verse number 17 and we will also start again from 17 because last time we could not finish and I'm not at all sad about this actually because <laughs> this is really nectar it's the oh, verse number 18 and it's about Sri Rata embodies the seven oceans hmm. I will go to Gurudev. I will try to switch on Zoom in his room. Okay. <laughs> so last time <clears throat> we were reading about the seven oceans of Radhika and we heard last time that Sri Rata is Vaidakya Sindhu what means an ocean of cleverness she is Rasa Panditya she knows everything about the science of taste that's why she even teaches Rasika Shaker. Then we heard that Srimati is the only ocean of Anurag. And Anurag means Mahabhav. Anurag is ever fresh and ever astonishing. Then we heard that Sri Rata is the ocean of Vatsalya. Vatsalya means love for the poor and the fallen. And Sri Rata has an inexhaustible storehouse of amorous rasa but also a great ocean of Vatsalya affection. Then we also heard that Sri Rata is the ocean of deep compassion. And we were talking about this connection from Vatsalya and deep compassion, what it does mean for us actually that we are in such a wonderful position that we don't need any qualification to go this path because our qualification is the mercy the mercy of Radha Because in fact, we are also like her children, small babies, and she is in that sense our mother, and she has the most vast ocean of deep compassion. And in this connection, we are in a very, very good position because in this way, Radharani will bring us back to her Seva. We heard about this last time. So 
So, and I want to continue here. We had some uh, quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amita, but there will be another one. That's why we will just continue here. And I'm very happy that these quotes are especially in this verse, actually, <laughs> because this way we can churn this nectar from another point. From the point of view, what actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was bringing to us? What gift? Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought us all these seven oceans from Radharani. And this is most wonderful. So Sri Radha is the ocean of deep compassion and this is the fourth ocean. She is always showering her devotees with the nectar stream of her mercy. Jai Gurudev. My obeisances and my loving hugs. And I don't know why, but yesterday we also had this same topic actually <laughs> about the mercy and the mercy of Radharani. How are you? What this Nesivala came with a stabilizer, just open the room, how much? So, Sri Rata is the ocean of deep compassion, always showering her devotees with the nectar stream of her mercy. Those who have been touched by the nectar of that compassion can testify. Srila Raghunadas Goswami says, Karuna Vidravadeha. Her body melts with compassion. So this is where we stopped last time and that's why we will start here again. So we heard that normally a person's heart melts with compassion. But only in Radharani's case, the whole body melts with compassion. She always bathes in streams of ambrosial compassion. And because Krishna accepted her mood when he became Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that's why Mahaprabhu is so merciful. That's why Mahaprabhu does not consider who is qualified or unqualified. Who is from which caste or from which ashram? No consideration at all. He gives Brahma, love of God, without making such distinctions. That is a body melting with compassion. 
It is Radha's storehouse of compassion, not Krishna's. In Braj Lila, the storehouse of Radha's mercy remained hidden and closed. But when Mahaprabhu accepted the mood and complexion of Sri Radha, it became manifest to the world. Mahaprabhu showed the people of the world how the body can melt with compassion. Because he assumed Sri Radha's merciful mood. Because Radhika's body melts with compassion. It cannot be compared to the fourth. Uh, it can be compared to the fourth cosmic ocean. The ocean of clarified butter or ghee. So just to remind, this was the topic last time we ended. And now comes the fifth, the ocean of Lavanya. Srimati is the ocean of Lavanya. The luster that gashes out of her bodily limb, like the luster shining out from inside pearls, is called Lavanya. What shines outside from the inside pearl is called Lavanya. Srimati is the ocean of Lavanya or elegance. The fish-like eyes of Sri Krishna, who is called Lavanya Sara, the essence of Lavanya or elegance in Srimad Bhagavat, never get tired of swimming in the ocean of Sri Radha's Lavanya. Indeed, his desire to swim in that ocean simply increases. Sripad Bilva Mangala Thakur said in Krishna Kanamrita, Lavanyam Ritavachi Lolita Trisham. Krishna's eyes below on the waves of nectarian lavanya. Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj writes in his Saranga Rangada commentary on this verse Sri Krishna's eyes have become very thirsty after the nectar waves of Sri Radha's Lavanya because Krishna is intoxicated seeing Radha's Lavanya and her maidservant and girlfriends are intoxicated by seeing Krishna looking at Radhika like this. The ocean of Lavanya is compared to the third cosmic ocean, the ocean of wine. So again, why it's called the ocean of wine or compared with that? Because it's intoxicating for Krishna. The Lavanya of Radha is so intoxicating for Krishna. And when the maid servants look how intoxicated Krishna is by Radharani's Lavanya, they are also intoxicated. The practicing devotee should also forget everything related to this world or the next world and become intoxicated by worshipping the lotus feet of that Sri Radha. Sri 
Sri Rata is number six, the ocean of Amrita Chappi Rupa. She is the very form of glowing nectar, and her form is like a vast ocean. She is Mahabhav personified, and Mahabhav is compared to nectar. It is the deepest possible law for Krishna, and Radha's form reveals this beauty and tastefulness to the utmost. Therefore, she is the Amrita Chapirupa Sindhu. Although Sri Krishna inundates the world with a mere drop of his beauty, even he drowns in the nectar ocean of Radha's form. Now comes another quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Krishna says in Chaitanya Charit Amrita, Adilila 4, 242 to 243. Gotika yatyapi amara, asa apyaita hoitri bhuvana, radhara dashane amara chudaya nayana. E matachagatera suke amihetu. Radhikara Rupa Guna Amara Chivatu. Although my forms defeats millions of cupids, is unrivaled in its sweetness and pleases all the three worlds. My eyes are still pleased by seeing Radha. In this way, I am the cause of joy to the world. But Radhika's form and attributes are my very life. Because the ocean of Radha's form is so sweet, it is compared to the second cosmic ocean, the ocean of sugarcane juice. So Krishna himself makes it very clear. Although his form defeats millions of cupids, is unrivaled in sweetness and pleases all the three worlds, although of this fact, he is so pleased by seeing Radha. And Radhika's form and attributes are the very life of him. And because Radharani is so sweet, she is compared to the ocean of sugarcane juice here. So this was the last quote of Chaitanya Charit Amrita in that verse, but we will of course end with the seventh ocean of Srimati, the ocean of playfulness, which means her frolics with her beloved Shyamsundara. She keeps Shyamsundara immersed in the waves of the ocean of her pastimes when she meets him. 
When the waves of Madan Ras swell in the ocean of Sri Radha's pastimes, even Sri Krishna, the transcendental youthful Cupid of Vrindavan, does not dare to place his boat like heart on its surface, just as a boatman fearfully keeps his boat on the bank of the Ganga, when her huge waves meet the ocean. This ocean of play is compared to the first cosmic ocean, the ocean of salt water. Because although the very sight of this ocean destroys all sins, a person who drinks its water will die. Similarly, when one faithfully chants and hears about the pastimes of Radha and Madhava, one will become free from all sin and from the heart's disease of lust. But when one tries to imitate these pastimes, one will perish. Jai Jai Shri Rati. These were the quotes from verse number 18 in Shri Shri Radha Rasa Suranidhi. So the next quotes from Chaitanya Chai Amrita I found in Shri Shri Radha Rasa Suranidhi. They are in verse number 21. Like always, we first hear the topic and then the quote. The cause of Radha's love is the topic here. When Krishna plays his all enchanting flute, Srimati rushes out to meet him. Like a forceful river goes forward to meet the ocean. Just as during the rainy season the current of a river becomes very forceful and floods it own banks. Similarly, the Ganga river named Radha overflows the restrictions of her Dukula. Two families, her own and her in-laws family. When it is filled with extraordinarily sweet waves of passionate love for Krishna and forcefully flows on towards the Krishna ocean. That is why Sripad called Swamini Surataranginī, the river of the gods Ganga here in this verse. This river of passion breaks all dams of religious or traditional principles with his great force of desire for Krishna. Not caring about the dangers that might occur on the way.
So Sripad, as a dedicated maid servant, follows Sri Rata, helping her to meet the Shyam Ocean, making her taste the nectar of Shyam Sundara by addressing her in the above mentioned sweet ways. Sri Radhike. O greatest worshipper of Krishna, you are called Radhika because you fulfill all of Sri Krishna's desires. Krishna Vancha Purti Rupa Kori Aradhane Atta Eva Radhika Nama Purane Vakane Chaitanya Charit Amrita Sri Radhika delightedly prepares herself for going out. Avisa So this was the quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita in verse number 21 of Shri Shri Adarasa Sudhanidhi. Maybe Gurudev wants to give us a little hint how to understand, how to go deeper. We cannot hear you, Gurudev. Uh, you read, then I, I will see. Krishna Vancha Purti Rupa Kori Aradhane Atta Eva Radhika Nama Purane Vakane. Sri Radhika delightedly prepares herself to going out. Abhisa. And she is like a river going for the ocean very forceful and floods her own banks do cooler from both families. The own family and the family-in-law. And this river of passion breaks all dams of religious or traditional principles with its great force of desire for Krishna, not caring, not caring about the dangers that might occur on the way. So here Radharani is called the Ganga River. The Ganga River named Rata overflows the restriction of her du kula. Uh, 
और हृदय के जखोज नो लाइक यू सी द ओशन ओशन मींस द वेव्स कमिंग इन दैट एंड द फ्लो ऑफ लव इज अ वेव्स ऑफ ओशन so this waves two family can make one. and more flow is coming back two rivers are joining and that flow is very high waves when they meet each other then any damp any blockage not possible to hold it that love flow of radha and mohan two kulamas two two families and two rivers one is the ganga only by touching that water it become pure and krishna rivers of love in when the flow nothing can block this flow is very high not to close the voice till and so this voice closing yeah close yeah, okay. oh, voice not Uh, up. My, my talking as the speaker. Which one is the this? So Radharani is flowing towards the ocean, flooding both sides, Dukula, forceful stream. No one can stop that stream going towards the ocean. This is her abisa. In verse number twenty-two, I found the next quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. First, we hear about the topic. Sri Krishna told Sri Rata, "O Kalyani, auspicious, beautiful girl, your lips that are as red as bimba cherries." defeat the sweetness of nectar your face is as fragrant as a lotus flower your words crush the bright of the cuckoo's songs and your body that is the abode of all beauty is cooler than sandalwood paste in this way all my senses are finding pleasure in relishing your sweetness and beauty Shri Krishna told that to Shri Radha. 
so we can see when we chant our mantras we are reminded of that and Krishna is actually here telling himself O Kalyani auspicious beautiful girl your lips that are as red as bimba cherries defeat the sweetness of nectar so your, your lips are even more sweet than nectar your face is as fragrant as a lotus flower Your words crush the bright of the cuckoo's songs. In your body, that is the abode of all beauty. The abode of all beauty is cooler than sandalwood paste. In this way, all my senses all my senses are finding pleasure in relishing your sweetness and beauty. So we may remember that Krishna is not speaking about senses like our body here in the material world. Transcendental senses. So Radharani is giving pleasure to all of Krishna's senses to the utmost in a way that he could not expect himself. Although Krishna always desires Radha, Goddess Yoga Maya arranges that she is difficult to get for him because she is married with another man. So now the topic is clear. Now comes the quote of Chaitanya Charit Amita Kabu Mile Kabu Namile Daivera Gatan. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. This Parakya Ras extramarital relationship makes the mutual attachment of the hero and heroine deeper. So this underlines the sweetness of this Parakya Rasa. Because we all understand when it's easy to see each other, you can always meet. This is one taste, but there's another taste. You are not allowed to see each other. You have to really find tricks to meet each other. You have to be very clever and you need some friends who help you that you can meet under very strange circumstances. And you always have to be very tricky that you have some time together. This is another taste. So this is Parakiras. It seems like Rata is married with someone. She is not allowed to meet her beloved. 
and this is giving more taste and there are more aspects which are described here sometimes radha is angry with krishna and krishna will pray to her please give me your generous lotus feet dehi pada palabam udaram from gita govindam making his own bed no making his own head more beautiful by placing rata's lack anointed lotus feet on it krishna sings hiyara majhare utera sera hiloli jabe parasite chahito mara payera anguli A wave of rasa comes up in my heart when I want to touch a wave of rasa. So like a big wave of rasa comes up in the heart of Krishna when he just wants to touch Radharani's tools. It is the quint essence of divine, uh, divinity when God wants to accept the lotus feet of Brahma. The love of God, utmost manifestation, Sri Rata, as the wealth of God. And this is a very interesting fact, because what makes Krishna to God for us? What makes him for us uh, that so interesting that we want to serve. In which situation the mantra wants to see him? When he wants to serve Radha's lotus feet when he is praising the greatness of Radha's lotus feet, when he is praising Radharani's qualities, when he is defeated by her good qualities, then the Mandaris are very happy. So without that, without Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram, he is not God. This fact that he is bowing down to Radharani, to the highest love, the love of God is making him interesting, otherwise not. But this does not make him inferior, rather it increases his superiority. And that is the glory of Sri Radha, the love personified. So I think this is a very uh, interesting point, the quintessence of the theme of God, actually. Why, why I want to serve a person? 
because he is mighty, he has power, he is beautiful and he rich and all this, really? Is that why I want to serve a person? Yeah, maybe in the material world, because I want to have something from that. But not in the realm of love. All these things are completely not interesting. In Vrindavan all this counts nothing. The only thing which is interesting is the love that God has for love of God. He's bowing down with all his richness, with all his power, with all these qualities. He is actually bowing down to love of God. And in this way, He is actually our Guru. Because from a material point of view, he has everything we could want to have. But for him, it's worth nothing without bowing down to Radharani's lotus feet. So we may follow him. And this is actually what he also says in the end of Bhagavad Gita. You know this verse 1866. Give up all religious and just bow down to my one, to my beloved. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give us this mercy, to show us this way of love and the way how to follow. He left behind here when he went back in his realm He left the Goswamis for us. The Goswamis were writing such wonderful books like this book, Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. So many things for us to just follow simply the way he showed us. And he left also the streams of mercy coming down the parampara. So it is actually very easy for us in that troubled time here, <laughs> Kali Yoga, to follow that path. And this is the mercy of Sri Radhe. He came in the mood of Radha. So we are very blessed, actually. The next quote from Chaitanya Chayat Amrita in Sri Sri Radha Rasa Suranidhi, I found in verse number 24. It's the verse about the lonely bathing place of the Yamuna. 
you may remember. So first a topic. In Brindavan, there's no mundane Cupid. Only the transcendental Cupid, Sriman Madan Gopal, the shelter of all material and spiritual Cupids. When Lord Brahma prayed to Krishna in his Braj Lila, he said, we eleven gods of the senses relish your sweetness through the senses of the people of Braj. And in this way, we are also blessed. Again, <laughs> when Lord Brahma prayed to Krishna in his Braj Lila, he said, we eleven gods of the senses relish your sweetness through the senses of the people of Braj. And in this way, we are also blessed. We heard about that fact that our senses are actually controlled by gods. We may think, yes, I, I, I'm moving my hand, but it, it's not like that. The gods are moving. So all your senses are controlled by gods. So the Brachavasis are always completely in love, in Brahma. So their senses are full of Brahma. So the gods are connected with their senses. They can indirectly actually have this Taste. Although the material gods cannot possibly reside in the senses of a transcendental eternal associate of Sri Krishna in Braj, Lord Brahma simply gives a likeness. Well, when you are in your Siddha Deha, the gods are not in control. They are in control of your body, material body. But they want to give at least some example. In the same way, although the mundane Cupid cannot live in Sri Vrindavan. So now we understand in the same way, material Cupid cannot live in Vrindavan. This metaphor, which Sri Krishna's lusty feelings that arose when he saw Sri Radha's limbs has been given and her divine body has been called Anangachivam. Sri Krishna can only be glorious as the transcendental youthful Cupid of Brindavan because of Sri Radha's sweetness and beauty. Otherwise, his glories are totally baffled. Again, Sri Krishna can only be glorious as the transcendental youthful Cupid of Vrindavan, because who is the empress of Vrindavan? Sri Radha. And because of her sweetness and because of her, her beauty, that's why he can be. Otherwise not. Otherwise his glories are totally baffled. So without Radha, no chance. Sarata Sangeyata Bhattitada Madan Mohana 
Anyata Vishwa Mohi Pishayam Madan Mohitaha. When Krishna shines with Radha, he enchants even Cupid, but otherwise he himself is enchanted by Cupid. Again, when Krishna shines with Radha, he enchants even Cupid, but otherwise he himself is enchanted by Cupid. So only with Radha he has this power to enchant Cupid. Otherwise, when Radharani is not there, he is enchanted by Cupid. And here comes the quote of Chaitanya Chait Amita. Kuti Gopira Manorate Manmatera Manamate Namadhare Madan Mohan. Chaitanya Chait Amrita. He mounts the chariots of the gopis' minds and steers the mind of Cupid. Therefore, he bears the name Madan Mohan. That's a nice picture. He mounts the chariots of the gopis' minds and steers the mind of Cupid. Therefore, he bears the name Madan Mohan. But Sri Radhika steers even his mind. And therefore, she is called Madan Mohan Mohini. And her body is called Ananga Jivam, Cupid's life giver. Cupid's life giver. Because without her body, there is no transcendental Cupid. So she is giving the life to him. She is giving all good qualities to him. Radharani is the source of his life, his existence as Cupid in Vrindavan. Just as a dying person is revived by drinking nectar, similarly, Krishna is revived by contacting Radha's divine body when he is about to die in the fire of lust. Just as a dying person is revived by drinking nectar, Similarly, Krishna is revived by contacting Radha's divine body when he is about to die in the fire of lust. And maybe we remember that verse, it's also here in Radharasa Sudhanidhi, when Radharani is bringing him back to life, he felt unconscious by contacting him with her body. Suddenly, the maidservant sees Shyam Sundara sitting in the branch of the tree. With folded hands, Krishna prays to her. Let me enjoy this vision for a moment.
without the maidservant agree to that, he cannot enjoy that vision. Seeing the situation, the maidservant is absorbed in rasa. Krishna is praying with folded hands, please, please, let me enjoy that vision. This is the grace of the mandri. given by Radha through the shadow. So this was the quote in verse number 24. The next quote I found from Chaitanya Charit Amrita is in verse number 25, a lotus flower in a love lake. A lotus flower in a love lake. just heard about the maidservant and her seva. So let us find the topic here. The maidservant has completed Trimati's bath and starts to dress and ornament her. But Swamini has noticed an unnatural look in her eyes and quickly covers her limbs. Startled, she looks all around, thinking, Is beautiful Sham maybe behind me somewhere? Sham is enchanted by the sweet gestures Srimati makes at that moment, and the maidservant feels blessed. When Swamini sees her maidservant looking at the top of the nearby Kadamba tree, she understands that there is a secret hidden in one of the tree's branches. And when she looks carefully, she sees a bluish effulgence emanating from it. Although Krishna tries to hide himself, Srimati catches him with her glance. Catches him with her glance. It's not just a saying, because whenever Radharani is moving, when her glance is going somewhere, Krishna is like bound to it. He cannot, by his own completely free move, actually, his movements are always connected with Sri Radha. She is catching him with a glimpse. She can move him She can do with him whatever she likes. Because it is said that when Krishna, uh, when Radharani is moving a little bit, Krishna's heart is tracked. It's like some ropes are bound in his heart and moving in that moment, pulling, pulling him. He has no independency in this case. 
that Rani is catching him. He cannot hide. He's sitting there in the tree, watching how the maidservant is actually bathing Radharani. Her limbs are adorned with the Bhava Bhushana, the emotional ornament called Vilas. And many intense emotions become manifest in her. Shyness and opposition pull her homewards. Heedlessness urges her to perform her duty of picking flowers, as if she was going to pick flowers after her bath to worship the sun. And ecstasy and lusty desires enter deeply into her body and mind, causing an indescribable condition in her. Shyam Sundara considers himself blessed by seeing her sweet condition at that moment. Here comes the quote. E bhava yukta de kira dhasya nayana sangama hoite sukkapai koti guna. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. When I see Radha's face and eyes in that mood, I get millions of times more pleasure than when I directly unite with her. Swamini chastises her maidservant with her eyes, saying, If you saw him, then why didn't you say anything? The maidservant answers with her eyes, I didn't see him. I also saw him just now. Actually, it was Srimati's innermost desire to see Shyam when she decided to bathe in the Yamuna that morning. So what a wonderful example of the seva, of the mandri. Krishna is sitting in the tree. The maidservant massaging her with oil, bathing her, trying her, making Sringara seva. And Krishna is watching it. Without the seva of the maidservant, there wouldn't be that taste. It's the highest seva for Radharani. And in the same time, of course, for her beloved. Without the maidservant, it couldn't come to that enjoyment of Krishna. E bhava yukta de kira dhasya nayana sangama hoite sukha poikuti guna. When I see Radha's face and eyes in that mood, I get millions of times more pleasure than when I directly unite with her. So blessed is this maidservant. Srila Anandadas Babaji is writing so many times. 
Blessed is this maidservant, and blessed is her savior. So maybe time for another one. The next quote I found in verse number 26, it's about the topic Sri Rata, the quint essence of everything. Such a wonderful topic. Sri Rata, the quint essence of everything. O oh, Radhe, the Creator has collected the essence of all spotlessly beautiful things of the whole world to make your body. O oh, do eyed beauty, the rays that emanate from your limbs defeat even the splendor of mirrors made of jewels. Srimati is also Rasa Sara Sukhaika Sara, the most delicious happiness for the essence of Rasa. Who is the essence of Rasa? Sri Krishna. The Upanishads say of God, Rasovai Saha. He is Rasa. But Sri Krishna is Akila Ras Amrita Murti, the very form of all nectarian transcendental flavors. And he contains un limited sweetness. Indeed, he is sweetness personified. Madhuryam evanu Krishna kanamrita. His sweetness steals the hearts of all moving and non-moving living beings. He even enchants himself with it. Govinda is the quint essence of Rasa. And Sri Radha is the quint essence of his happiness. Krishnendriyaladi gunai udhara Sri Radhika rachati radhikeva. Sri Radhika can only be compared to herself. In other words, <laughs> there's no comparison. She can only be compared to herself. And there's no one else like her. For with her attributes, she gives joy to all of Krishna's senses. Govinda Lilamrita 11. 118. Or, Sri Rata is the only essence of bliss and rasa in general. Sri Pat Kavi Kanapuna says, Rase Saras Jamat Karo. The essence of rasa is astonishment. The Madan Mahabhav of Sri Radhika is the most astonishing and the most relishable rasa. Therefore, she is the quint essence of rasa and bliss. 
She even astonishes Govinda. Govinda is bliss personified, but she makes even him, as well as all devotees, happy. Now comes the quote. Sukaru Krishna Kore Sukha Asvadana Bhaktagana Sukkadite Ladini Karana Chaitanya Charit Amrita Thus, Sri Radha is the only essence of bliss. And she is also the essence of compassion. And here we see the connection where we begun, the ocean of compassion. And here she is called the essence of compassion. So she is an ocean of the essence of compassion. The quint essence of compassion. She is always the quint essence. So this is our Swamini. We want to serve that quintessence. And there comes another quote here. That's why I will go on reading here in that explanation or commentary. She is also the essence of compassion. First, one must realize what is compassion. What means compassion before we can understand what the quint essence of compassion means? Sripat Ramanuja Acharya writes in his commentary on Vedanta Darshana, Daya hi nama svarta nirapiksha para dukkasa hishnuta. Compassion means that one gives up all selfishness and one cannot tolerate the suffering of others. One gives up all selfishness and cannot tolerate the suffering of others. These feelings are not possible towards that matter, only towards living beings. Although the soul is by nature transcendental, it is still under the full control of time, karma, maya, and God. Sri Jiva Goswami writes about compassion in Priti Sandarbha. Although God is self-satisfied, he still likes to accept the service of his devotees and therefore he creates the desire for devotional service in the hearts of the fortunate candidate devotees. Thus, his heart melts with compassion and is filled with the desire to benefit the conditioned souls. So this is the position of God. But now comes the quintessence. The 
greatest gift is devotion and love. Ladini Tvaraya Kore Bhaktera Poshana. Through his pleasure potency, we all know who that is. Krishna maintains the devotees and that pleasure potency is Sri Radha. So through his pleasure potency, Krishna maintains the devotees and that pleasure potency is Sri Radha. And now Krishna has accepted the lustre of, and mood of Sri Radha and has descended as Gora to bless all the conditioned souls of the age of Kali with the most benevolent gift of Raga Nuga Brahma which was hidden in the storehouse of Brajas Nikunjas. Sri Radhika is the quint essence of compassion indeed. Sri Radha is also the quint essence of sweet, beautiful forms, Madura Chapi Rupasara. The word Chapi means color, lustre or beauty. So Sri Radhika is the quint essence and she is keeping alive the devotees. Even the devotees who are devoted to Krishna, she keeps alive. What to speak of the mandaris, of the maidservants. So here we will end for today. And next time you can hear about the six jewels Radharani is presenting. So more nectar next time. If someone has some uh sagt man Ergänzung some more to say, some feelings to share, or some questions, whatever. Hmm? Some ads. So thank you very much that you are here and Bless me in that way that I can have your darshan. Thank you, Gurudev, for your mercy, although I see you busy and always distributing the mercy of Radharani. Thank you all. <laughs>